back at you with, oh, I didn't check beforehand. Lesson number seven, I believe this is, of my Basics of Cross Stitch series. Today, I'm going to show you how to wash your stitching and um, dry it out and iron it and some do's and don'ts. There's not a whole lot of do's and don'ts, just a couple things to um, really know about so you're more comfortable with the process. There's nothing complicated here. There's nothing rocket science here. You just need some basic tools, um, which most of you probably have something that will work. And if not, your grocery store has it. So I am going to be washing my fractal piece. And yes, this is kind of just another excuse to show this, <laughs> but it is also a chance to um, get it ready to take it to be framed because I'm not going to let this sit unframed for any length of time. This is DMC. So they say it's color fast for the most part. It is color fast, but because there are so many colors in this, I do have some trepidation and I did have numerous people recommend the Shout Color catches, Catchers. This is actually something we use in the knitting world as well when we are washing our knitted garments, um, especially the hand dyed yarns because they do have a tendency to run a little bit. As much as any hand dyer works to totally set their yarn, there is also often some loose dye um, that comes out. So the Color Catchers do a great job with that. I have to admit I've never used them. I've never been in a position where I've had to worry a whole lot about the dye running simply because I was either washing something that was all one color or the colors were close enough that I didn't have to worry about bleeding too much. But with this I'm going to use them and we'll see how they work. Now because um, DMC is supposed to be color fast I don't expect there to come any dye come out that will be on the sheet, but I also want to test the over dyed flosses. Now this is the little swatch that I was working on in previous videos. So we have um, Threadworks, Gentle Arts, Victorian Motto, Gentle Arts, and then I made some additional swatches down here. Weeks. This is weeks, um, I'm not gonna, I meant to bring the skeins down and I forgot. This is weeks, this is another Victorian motto, and this is Crescent Color Works um, Manor Red. I do remember that one because that's the last one I did. <laughs> I just made these little swatches right now, just before I started here. I will say, um, I had mentioned in my video about the flosses that Gentle Arts previously on their label had said they are not color fast and now they say that they are. The same goes for weeks. This bot, no, the top one. Um, I was going to use an old one, an old Turkish red, and it said not color fast on the label. But then I looked at the ones I just got for the Bloomtopia stitch along and those say that they are color fast according to industry standards. So um, you'll need to be aware of um, just checking your label to be sure before you start anything. But anyways, I am going to test this one as well with the color catcher, and it'll be a good test of the over dyed flosses to see um, whether we have to worry about them or not. And as always, and I'll probably say this several times through the video, your mileage may vary. I did try and use like deep reds because those are the ones that we traditionally have the most problems with or are most worried about. So we shall see, right? Um, as I said, your mileage may vary depending on, I don't know what kind of circumstances might change, the, the heat of your water, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, I will be using just tap water. I'm not heating it up. The tap water here at this time of year is fairly cool. Um, if it were summer, it would be fairly warm. <laughs> There's no insulation in the building, so the pipes are heated up according to the atmosphere outside. So right now it's fairly cool, so the water's going to be fairly cool. I'm also using soak. Several of you had mentioned using Dawn dishwashing liquid, and I know that's what a lot of people use, and that's fine. I have soak. This is a rinseless wash that, again, is used in the knitting world. This and Yucalan are the most popular, I would say, in the knitting world 
for washing our knitted garments. This, like I said, it is a rinseless wash, so that means even though it makes bubbles, um, I don't need to rinse it out. I probably will rinse it out some regardless, um, but I, I don't have to worry about it too much. I'm just gonna be using a little bit, but it will be there um, in the water to help. So that's really all I'm using. Sink with water, soak, and the color catcher. So I am going to turn you around and we're gonna get started. Okay, we've got the water going. Like I said, just using cool water. And you do wanna use just cool water for this. You don't wanna use, um, I don't even think I'd use lukewarm. So I have my soak here. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit in. And you'll see, it does bubble. And we don't need a whole lot of water for this. Just want to make sure the soak is well distributed. I'm going to get out one of the sheets. So it basically just looks like a thin dryer sheet. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And here we go. And really, there's nothing more to it than that. I'm gonna let it soak a little bit, but whether you can see through the bubbles, I don't see any color coming off. We'll run that through. Now the Shout Color Catcher box does say if there's any color coming off, it says the proof is on the sheet, so it should catch it, and we can see afterwards. But the water still looks pretty darn clear, right? So I'm gonna let that sit for maybe 10 minutes. Mostly just, it's not like, you know, I could, I could agitate it a little bit. This is to make sure that all the oils from my fingers are, you know, off here as much as possible. Um, this is a project that I was working on since March, so it did get a lot of touching and I did stitch it in hand. So there was a lot of touching, but I do try and keep my hands very clean when I'm working on my needlework. So I'm gonna let that sit. If any dye were going to come off it, it would have come off already. So even with all those intense colors, there is no bleeding happening. All right, I'm gonna let it, let it sit and I will be back. Alrighty, so here we are back. Been soaking for about five or six minutes. You can see the water's totally clear. Nothing on the color catcher. So that is good. Now, you aren't gonna necessarily need to let your stitching soak for any length of time. The reason I did is because this is a full coverage and remember, um, it's fairly matted on the back, right? It's a fairly thick stitched piece. I wanted to let it soak to make sure that all of the fibers got wet so that the water really soaked in it. So that is that. Now, I am going to take this out and we'll work on the drying process. In the meantime, I'm gonna put this in. So you remember this is the over dyed flosses. Let's go ahead and put it in. See if we can see any bleeding. Not really seeing any, which is good. Even from the Crescent Color Works down at the bottom, I don't see any color coming out. I'm gonna move you down a little closer here. So that's good, even with these dark reds. Now, as I said, your mileage may vary. You may get a skein or you might have an old skein. Make sure you read that label and see what it says. Although the Crescent Color Works says it is not color fast. Now, to me, I'm thinking there might be 
I don't know whether you can see it on camera as much. I'm feeling like there's a slight pink tinge to the water now, but it could just be um, my imagination as much as anything or the color of the lighting in here. But there's certainly no bleeding that's happening. You don't see any color besides the strands underneath bleeding onto the white, right? And when I pull out the color catcher, which is supposed to catch any color, I don't see any color on this either. So there you have it. I'm pleased. And I will admit, a bit surprised that none of these bled. So I'm gonna let the water drain and I'm going to um, move you around a little bit so you can see what I do to help dry my stitch pieces. All right, so here we have a totally soaking wet fractal stitched piece just pulled out of the water. I just put it on, laid it on the countertop. So I'm going to get, for this piece, I'm just going to get a little hand towel. You'll use whatever towel you need to use for the size of your project. I'm going to lay it out here. And as you see, I did not rinse this at all. Because I used the soak, I do not have to rinse it. So I'm going to fold this in on this and then roll it up. And this is what I do for my knitting as well. So I've got a nice little bundle with a stitch piece and you can already feel the towel is getting wet and it's just going to continue. You can see the color starting to change because it was very wet. I would not wring out your um, stitching at all that you don't want to add addition, um, you don't want to introduce any wrinkles into your piece, um, into your fabric. So I have it here. Now I could just press on it here on the counter and get out the water that way. But you know, this you're going to get it out as much as you can. Um, but what I like to do, and again, I do the same thing for my knitted garments. I'm going to turn you around so you're kind of angled looking at the floor. Please excuse whatever dirt and cat hair and shoes are laying around. And then I just put it on the floor and step on it. So my additional weight is really going to take more of the water out. And you can see I'll turn it a quarter of a turn and again, and step on it. And then another time. And I kind of go across the whole piece like this to get the edges as well as the center. So then, open it up. And while of course it isn't totally dry, it is a lot drier than it was. Now last, last step, we're gonna iron it. So come along with me to where my ironing board is. All right, so we are here at my ironing board. My ironing board is not fancy. It is an ironing board that is just one of those that you hang on the back of the door. I have never actually hung it on the back of a door. I have it on two of my dining room chairs, which are um, bar stool height. So it is allows it to be the perfect height for me to work at. So I have my wet piece here. I have a thick towel. And these two white, or three actually, white pieces on top are actually old diaper cloths. Now, I've never used them as a diaper. I think I used them as like burp cloths or something like that. But I like to lay that on top of the towel just for extra padding. And so I just turn this over and start ironing. I have my iron set on the hottest setting. It is the linen cotton setting because I have cotton floss and cotton fabric. Although I think with Lugana, I think this was Lugana. It's actually a cotton, cotton something blend. Um, or maybe Lugana is 100% cotton. I don't remember. But anyway, I have it on the hottest setting. And so I just go back and forth over 
different directions. And this helps not only with the drying process and the getting the wrinkles out, it helps to puff up the, um, the stitches a little bit and even them out if there's the ones that might not um, have been sitting right. Now, if I were ironing on something, a piece that had metallic threads, I wouldn't iron directly on it. I would put one of my cloths over top of it and iron through that. If I were ironing a piece with beads, I would actually not use, well, I would use the, the diaper cloth, a single one on top. I would have the beaded part, the, the right side placed directly onto the towel so that the beads had a chance to kind of nestle down into the, into the nap of the towel. Now you may have pieces that are, have more stubborn wrinkled areas and you'll want to just, you know, go in different directions, kind of pulling the fabric in different directions to work those out. And if it's a particularly stubborn wrinkle or fold, maybe you've had a piece folded for a number of years and that, that fold line is particularly stubborn, it may just not come out. That may be something that you'll need to um, hopefully get out with framing. Now, if you are working on a piece, ironing a piece that you haven't washed, what I have found works wonders is best press. I use this all the time, as you can see, I need a new bottle. You can get this at Joann's. It's fairly cheap. Um, it's a great tool to have for whenever you need to iron something that you haven't washed. And I, again, just turn it over and I spray the back and iron it out. And it really does a great job of getting out most of the wrinkles. Again, if you have particularly stubborn fold lines, you might have to spray this more. You might, you don't wanna soak it, but you might want to like really concentrate on that fold line and get it pretty wet and see if that will take the, the fold line out. Um, I don't get it wet. I just spray lightly, you know, maybe about three inches away. I spray lightly over the piece and then iron. And then if there's any stubborn places, I'll spray a little more and, you know, more concentrated and iron that some more. And again, going different ways to kind of pull the fabric out. Not, not biased with the grain, either left or right or up or down, um, to try and pull those, those folds out. I have had seen posts where people have talked about having staining with best press. I have never experienced that myself. Um, and I've used it, like I said, pretty heavily in some pr places for particularly stubborn folds. And there have been folds that I have not been able to get out. And like I said, you know, that kind of has to come out with framing, hopefully. So with this being as thick and as wet as it was, um, it's almost dry. The fabric itself without the stitching is dry. The stitching is still a little bit damp. So I will let that air dry. And of course, I never let the iron just sit in one place. That would be bad, especially as hot as it is. But once this dries, it's ready to go for framing. Now, I did remember belatedly that um, Michelle had suggested that I stitch two rows of black the whole way around it so that when, you know, I had mentioned that I wanted to frame it with a plain back frame right up against the stitching with the two black lines of stitching on it. If they do, if they aren't able to get it, you know, mounted well enough so that the white is hidden, the black stitches would, would eliminate that problem. So I need to go ahead and do that. Um, of course, I've already washed it, so I'll have to wash it again, but, um, or maybe I'll just take it to the framer. I don't know. I'd hate to take it to the framer and say, have them say, yeah, we can do it and then find out they can't. But actually now that it's washed, Nah, just do it, Jan. That way you'll be sure. So pretty. All right, guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I will help as much as I can. Until the next time, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, I had to do an addendum here. I left this in my sink 
you know, in the drained sink while I went to finish the video. And I came back now while the video is, um, I was transferring the video from my phone over to my iPad, which is where I edited, edit things. And I came back into the bathroom to clean this up and this is what I found. So, it's interesting that the colors down here, especially the bottom one, the color and or the classic color works, which does not claim to be color fast. These ones didn't run. Again, this was this is General Arts Claret. This is an old one though, from I think before they started doing things that are color fast. This is Victorian Motto Special Orchid. This is General Arts Poinsettia, which I think is a, one of the new ones that is does claim to be color fast. And this is Threadworks. So, especially the Claret ran. Certainly, some of the um, some of the reds and the and the Threadworks ran. It looks like it looks like all of them ran, but none of the ones down below. Now, the way this is patterned, it's almost like whenever it maybe it was running whenever you know bleeding whenever i had it in the water and the the water did look pink and um there was just it was just diffused enough that i didn't really see it although again the color catcher does not look pink at all i am going to put water back in the sink and run the color catcher through and see what happens with the the dye that has run so let's Go ahead and do this and see if it cleans up any of the dye that is now on the fabric. I don't expect it to, but like I said, I've never worked with color catchers, so I don't know. And since the fabric is not dry yet, maybe it works some kind of magic that I'm not familiar with. So let's just put that little bit in. Nope. I mean that, especially that claret on the end. That's not going anywhere, the bleeding on the fabric. So, now if I had taken it out immediately from the sink and rolled it up in a towel to dry, maybe we wouldn't see the running. But, that definitely bled. But again, interesting, these ones down here did not, even the classic color works, which was which does not claim to be color fast. So, all right guys, interesting, interesting. The moral of the story is if you have a thread that claims not to be color fast, take it at its word. Sorry for the light shining down in there. Um, take it at its word and either rinse your threads first or do not hand wash. Just use your best press to iron your piece or you will end up with something like that, which would be very sad. Anyways, again, have any questions, let me know. Talk to you soon, bye-bye.